the nervous system um, stores a lot of stuff. And there is a book, The Body Keeps the Score is one. Um, and then there is one, What Happened to You by, what's her name? Her name is Oprah. And then there's a doctor. I can't remember the doctor's name. But both of them, and it's very prevalent right now that anything that happens to you regarding trauma, uh, trauma happens to all of us. Anything that made you more or less feel uncomfortable, that's very simplistically said. But something that left a trace in your body. And sometimes you don't even realize this. For me, that was abandonment to a degree and not feeling worthy enough. And there is a deep patterning in my body from my parents fighting when I was two. And that's a realization I've come to, to lately too, that I'm trying to recreate a chaotic environment because I feel that is what I associate with love because there was a lot of yelling. It was always chaotic. And therefore I'm trying to recreate that because I think that is love, which is it sounds might sound nuts, but if you start going deeper into your journey, then that might be something <laughs> you might realize too. So with this being said, I never felt safe. I was always on high alert. My nervous system was just strung out. I was in fight or flight. And that is what you can attribute to me having a high metabolism too, is that my body's constantly going. It doesn't relax. So Hence why you might see more people who might be very fit or might be ripped. They might have some trauma around not feeling safe and they're constantly chasing something um, and they're in fight or flight. So I know that goes for me. I'm sure there's more to it, genetics and so forth and lineage. My mom has a similar thing. Uh, but yeah, in short, that's why I, I, I don't really gain weight. If I do, I need to work out a whole lot and eat a whole lot and sleep a whole lot. And that's my life. And it used to be back in college when I played football. Uh, no more. But that, that in short is a short side note on, on your comment. Why when, you I say, when you say football, are we talking like soccer or are we talking real American football? Real. <laughs> if you want to say real, <laughs> real. Say real because soccer is a great sport, but like, like the, the hitting kind. <laughs> yes. Yes. The hitting kind. What did you yeah. Play? What, what position did you play? Uh, receiver, kicker, punter. So I, I like the flair. I, I played basketball. I played corner for a little bit too, but uh, I have, let's put it like this. Um, offending or not white boys, the white boy grit and, uh, but not any speed. <laughs> How'd so, you play receiver with no speed just because you kept on working like out? Yeah. People? Yeah. Yes, exactly. More yeah. of a slot position, more like I, what I'm doing, I'm doing damn well but I am not relying on my talent because there's not much of it. So I'm just going to outwork everyone. Uh, and Man. that's why I didn't go pro. Right. I mean, if you want to go pro, you need to have the talent and outwork everyone. You got to have like, yeah, world-class talent plus the world-class work ethic as well. There's yeah. uh, there's, there's so many people that have God given talent that can take them so far, but they just, you know, what does it say? Uh, uh, there's a cliche term that I was thinking of, but basically like it's, you know, you need hard work. Hard work has to meet that talent because everybody's talented at that, at that level. Now you have to actually have the work ethic to get you through. And um, it's incredible, man. I, I know some people like, uh, have you ever seen the movie Rudy before? Yes. Yeah. yeah so, amazing. so great movie about an underdog that wasn't even supposed to be on the field and he finally made it. And like, he built this cult like following. And, you know, for those who haven't seen this movie, that's probably 30 years old now, but uh but there's this Classic. guy that I talked to uh, here locally for UGA University of Georgia, and he's the local Rudy. He's the guy, his name's Candler Cook. And Candler Cook tried to walk on as a guy with zero athletic prowess, like none. And he was like 170 pounds, maybe, maybe even less. I think he was less. It was his freshman year. And by his senior year, he finally like had put in enough work and he was eating like 10 times a day. He, he scheduled his his college classes around his feeding schedule mm. so that he could get enough meals in. Cause it was like, you know, to gain the weight he needed to. And he went from like 170 to 270 in four years, all natural, no steroids. Um, and he went, he, he won some like strength lifting competitions, even think about how powerful college Jesus. athletes are. He like, he set some like uh, lifting records and like all this crazy stuff. And it was all based on his work ethic and mentality. And he finally got in for like two plays at the very last game of his senior year. No, it was incredible. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that that's amazing. Yeah. That that is one part I did not have is uh, 
to stick with something I had, like, I'm initially going to do it. And then I ran myself into the ground eventually, but I didn't stick with a lot of things. And that's another, I mean, tracing it back to my childhood too, is I've moved, I don't know how many times in my life. So I'm good with, all right, I'm going to give him my darnest and I'm going to give him my all, but if it doesn't work out on to the next thing, on yeah. to the next thing, on to the next thing. And it is the most, you say camaraderie, and trust, and it's incredibly hard for me to trust, I shaped and it was formed during football. So that is, that is one of the things I wish I would have stuck with because I'd only stuck with it for a year. And I was so, uh, I wanted to be best at everything and outwork everyone. And we got a new uh, set of coaches. They fired all the coaches and the new coaches decided, okay, I think you're a bunch of pussies and we're going to run you to the ground. 